What is up everyone? Andy Kruger here, here with my buddy Lincoln, German Shepherd. He was in one of my more popular videos from last year, the first steps of teaching heel. If you haven't watched that, definitely check it out. I'm here for a little update. Lincoln's back for some training and I'm gonna show you some of the progress that he's made with that heel command. You guys know how I roll. Loaded up with some food on me for him for rewards. He now fully understands the heel position and the behavior. So we've layered in our training collar and negative reinforcement and we're gonna hit some training drills. So sit back, relax. Lincoln, are you ready? Are you ready? Oh yeah, he's ready. Let's go. So in that first video, we're teaching him the heel position, and it's a lot of this. It's a lot of this. We've done that quite a bit. He fully understands it. So now we are fading the lure. This is the next step. This is when the hand comes off his face, then the food ultimately comes out of the hand. So here comes fade. Here we go. Ready? Okay. Oh yeah. Food is not directly in his face anymore. He's waiting patiently for it. It's a loose leash. Yes. If your dog can't do that, don't you dare move on. I see. Okay. Do you want to bond with your dog? Do you want to teach a real skill set? Or do you just want to stop the pulling? If you just want to stop your dog from pulling and doing other things, this probably ain't the channel for you. This is teaching the actual behavior of heel. It's teaching the dog, this is your favorite place to be. This is the best part of your day. Walking right next to me, working for me. see how we're progressing it's food in the face it's food away from the face now it's no food in the hands at all starts to happen. Fading allure is a skill set in and of itself. There's many steps. It sure isn't easy, but hopefully watching some of these drills will give you some good ideas how you can begin to do it with your dog.
Side note, one of the most asked questions on the previous video with him was, how do you do this with a small dog? Yeah, the dog's right at your waist. How do you do it with a smaller one? Well, I actually made a video with a small dog, so how dare you for asking that question without watching the rest of my videos? Here's the answer. You bend over. Andy, that's gonna kill my back. Okay, don't get a small dog. With a small dog, how do you reward anything? Sit, down, come, place, free. You bend over for everything. That's like buying a big piece of furniture and having it dropped off. It's gotta go up to the second floor. You go, well, how am I gonna get it there? That's gonna kill my back. Yeah, <laughs> it just might hire someone to do it then. The exact same principles apply to a small dog, to a puppy, but yeah, you gotta bend over a little bit. So do your stretches, drink your water, you'll be just fine. contact and attention is not required but it sure is nice I definitely pay the eye contact but the position is what's important because obviously if I take Lincoln for a walk out and about downtown he's not going to be staring right at me the whole time now he's going to be inclined to periodically check in with me because that's what's been paid so that's great but the dog is certainly allowed to look around observe the environment. So don't worry if your dog isn't staring at you the whole time, as long as their head is in line with your hip. And when your left hand just reaches down, it touches the top of the dog's head. That's when they're in the perfect position. Yes. Ultimately, the goal is to replace the food with praise. They're both positive reinforcement. They're both a reward. The dog likes both of them. That praise has to be valuable to your dog. If you try to pet your dog out in public and they're like, and they don't want any part of it, that praise doesn't hold a whole lot of value, does it? So getting away from the food we want to go to praise and every now and then, boom, reward marker, I explode, food magically comes out. I'll show you. Big Link looks up at me, I wanna pay that. A bunch of healing, no food out, praise only, he's doing good, doing good, boom, the food comes out. This is fading the lure. You can't go from constant feeding all the time to total cold turkey, no food. There's a process behind it. Okay. My leash is complementing my healing technique. Negative reinforcement on the training collar. OPA is the French word for heal. OPA, OPA. Good boy, good boy, yes. The leash is your friend. It's an extension of your arm. Use it not to correct, but to communicate. 
Everyone sees the leash and prong and they go, Ugh. metal spikes on Fluffy's neck and you jerk it and the spikes dig into Fluffy and it makes me sad. Just cause the dog's wearing a prong collar, it doesn't mean we're punishing, doesn't mean we're ripping the dog's head off. It's a communication tool. Can you correct with it? Of course you can, but that's not its only purpose. The dog should be excited when the prong collar comes out. Just like your dog gets excited when you go, you wanna go for a walk, Fluffy? And you go get the leash out of the mudroom and they go nuts. Why not with the prong collar? It's a training tool. Your dog loves training. They should love the collar. Oh yeah, that's a good boy. Good boy. Okay. Yes. So you guys can see how this command should evolve and develop the more time you spend with the dog. Referencing the first video again, if you only do what you saw in that video one million times over, it's not gonna get you to the end result of heel. It's called the first steps of training heel, but you can't stay on the first step forever. So fading the lure, adding a training collar when the dog understands the behavior, understanding negative reinforcement. You can clearly see that Mr. Lincoln understands what I want from him when I tell him OPA, therefore, if I start adding distractions into the environment, neighbor dog behind a fence, kid on a bike, it's more than fair to start correcting the dog appropriately for totally leaving heel because he knows what you want in the first place. You're telling him what to do instead of what not to do. Here's what's not fair. You spend six months with your German Shepherd on a flat collar, on a harness. For some reason, your knees don't bend. Walking like that, and one day you go, you know what, my dog's getting so strong. Walking him's a nightmare. I'm gonna put on the prong and start making him stop pulling. Not fair to the dog whatsoever because you're telling him what not to do instead of what to do. You tell him, for months, pull, pull, yep, this is it, this is it. And then one day you go, metal spikes in your neck, stop it right now. Dog goes, wait a minute, you've been lying to me this whole time. This is unfair. I don't trust you. I don't feel bonded to you. Teach the heel position first. Everyone always asks, how do you stop pulling? How do you stop pulling? And you're gonna hate my answer if you ask that question. The answer? heel start to finish that's how you stop pulling you put an actual heel command on the dog there's no magic trick there's no magic collar dogs can pull on a prong collar almost the same as they can pull on a flat collar nothing magic about the collar it's the technique it's how you use it it's what you teach the dog in the first place so Linky here's wearing down a little bit. We're gonna do one more lap, and then we're gonna get the boy some water. Maybe we'll let him jump in the pond. Okay, Link, here we go. Look alive, Lincoln. Look alive, yep. Got the food. Boom, load him up. Boy, ready? Ready? Okay. Oh yeah, buddy. Oh yeah. My leash isn't doing the work. Lincoln's brain's doing the work. Yes. I tell all my clients, if you take your dog for an hour walk and they're tired at the end of it, if you actually have a real heel command, take him for a 15 minute walk, he'll be way more tired. He'll be mentally worked hired in a much better way, and you won't have to over-exercise the heck out of your dog. German Shepherds are known for hip dysplasia. They're known for joint issues. 
especially as they get older. The biggest mistake is getting a German Shepherd puppy, not having the right lifestyle, not being educated on training, creating a rambunctious puppy and just running them into the ground. Walks, 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 dog park, daycare, run, 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 run. He's still not tired. You can't exercise a puppy like that. It's horrible for their structure. Their growth plates aren't even close to being closed yet. You're gonna kill their elbows and hips. You need to work the dog, like you see here, work the dog instead of just exercising the dog. Of course, exercise is important. Throw them in the yard, give them a toy, let them run around here and there. Great, perfect. But you need to work your dog and not just run them into the ground and depend on them being exhausted to behave. Then you work for your dog. Dog doesn't work for you. I hope this video helps. Hope I didn't offend anyone. Lincoln, we appreciate your work, buddy. We appreciate your work, bud. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, Lincoln. We've obviously broken his spirit. Kidding. If you guys have it, if you like what you see, you want to learn more, hit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash Andy Kruger. Over 100 videos, full training sessions, step-by-step, -step, broken down. There's tons of healing videos on there, hours worth in fact. So if you really wanna make the investment in your dog and in your training, you will not need anything else except Patreon. So check that out. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Until next time, Lincoln, tell them. Tell them, Lincoln. All right, we're still working on that. Free, see you guys.